Hello friends and family from around the world, this is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on January 3rd, 2024. Welcome to another Surviving Daily on the Planet, Day 3, 2024. Welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well, earthquakes, volcanoes. Having a look here, the last 48 hours on our sun, that plasma filament in the southern hemisphere did leap away, producing a coronal mass ejection from the southern hemisphere as well notable action there quickly thereafter having a look at the last 48 hours incoming two bright active sunspot regions right now turning in for an earth facing event looking at outgoing here we do have a coronal hole that is departing No major solar flares to talk about today. Having a look at multi-spectrum, pointing out the last 48 hours of events, not including the X-class solar flare that we saw the other day, New Year's Day, but just recently pretty fast growing sunspot region in the equatorial region of our sun. There are the coronal holes. But yeah, fast, the forming sunspot. Going to be keeping an eye on that. 171 angstroms here. Just another light to see our sun. Amazing sun in action. And all of its dynamics. Looking at the heliosphere, most notable northeast region. So top right amongst the five sunspot regions we have right now. Having a look at those sunspot regions in action. As we saw, minor M-class solar flare and a couple sporadic C-class solar flares throughout the day today. So we are under level one solar radiation storm impacts expected. Not reporting the solar winds right now. Solar X-ray flux, as you can see, two M-class solar flares from two days ago and barely an M-class flare yesterday. And notable spiking seas today. Solar proton flux rising up into the level 1 region. Geomagnetic activity sitting at a KP3. And here are solar winds as they're coming in at 440 kilometers per second right now. Highest throughout the day today, 487 kilometers per second. But you can see there is that solar storm impact overnight of the second. And having a look at our magnetosphere right now, this is the past 6 hours. We are under a lot of pressure right now. Normally, this map doesn't look like this. And even when the solar winds are really fast, it does not always increase the pressure planes. But we are under immense pressure right now. Solar radiation, level one radiation storm in effect. And this is our magnetosphere. Our shield. With an immense amount of pressure within it and all around it. Having a look here at the Space Weather Prediction Center, they have not changed their models from yesterday, still showing that mammoth CME taking off from the sun and impacting Earth second to the fourth. ISWA Space Prediction Spiral here, showing yesterday's backside CME taking off towards Mars and Venus, but yet another one here today through the same region. So a double shot towards Venus and Mars. And big, thick stripe of space weather. Solar energy is swinging around right now. Hi, having a look at the current aurora forecast for northern and southern hemisphere. Not too much to talk about. Minor activity across Canada and as well through Alaska. Parts of Russia, but then watch parts of Eastern Europe. Overnight tonight for you, you will see up to a level two aurora, southern hemisphere still. It depicts where your northern hemisphere is and where is it? Who knows? Anyways, let's have a look at Alaska 3, showing the last 48 hours of events, depicting our CMEs. Most notable 
was the southern hemisphere and as well the backside there. And just recently, the last few images. Now let's get to earthquakes. The last 24 hours have been interesting. Notable earthquake there, Mariana's Trench, 5.1. Northern Mariana Islands as well, 5.2. 4.6 as well. And then all of the earthquakes off the west coast of Japan. Lots of activity through the Philippines and Indonesia today. Even a 5.3 here, very close to Krakatoa volcano. There are no new eruptions to report today. Still active and erupting 43 volcanoes across the planet. There's our deepest earthquake. 4.3, 420 kilometer depth. That's the past 24 hours. Normally we do see the deeper earthquakes in Fiji. It's been pretty quiet ever since the other day and then a large 7.5 Japan. Increasing seismicity through Alaska and as well here through the Rick James Ridge, 4.7 and as well 4.4 Iceland. And that is right on the fault line, but this time on the north side. So all of the earthquakes that we saw recently in Iceland, they were on the east side of the fault and now on the north. So very strange indeed. 4.5 notable earthquake there, Mexico, San Carlos, Southern uh, South American plate here, Argentina, 5.2 and as well Chile, 4.9 earthquake here, South Sandwich Islands, and as well South of Africa reporting a 5.1 magnitude earthquake. Activity here, building through Tajikistan, 24 hours for earthquakes i also wanted to point out here some activity on usgs this is looking across north america the united states notable earthquake there 2.0 Loudoun, new hampshire but there's been a lot of minor activity through new york and as well i wanted to show you here overlooking california coastline where this 4.5 earthquake was right on the fault line mexico san carlos gulf of california no major swarms to talk about, but increasing and building activity towards the Pacific Northwest right now. And I've been watching and waiting and warning everybody. Please, heads up, stay aware and prepared. Be ready in the Juan de Fuca subduction zone. Earthquakes in Canada, they're not as frequent as the United States, but they do happen. Having a look here, USGS is reporting 184 earthquakes in the past 24 hours. So that is below average. Normally we're around 200 to 220. But I wanted to share here with you the last 30 days for earthquakes around the world. And reporting just under 10,000. 9,800 earthquakes this past month. Look across North America all throughout the New Madrid, and then up into the Rockies. And of course, into California. Not showing Canada there. Look at all this activity through Alaska. And then we get down into Japan. See the last month, just recently, the 7.5. On the west side of Japan, rocks, and Mizu, Japan. Most times they're all on the east side. Notable earthquakes there through central Russia and northern China. And as well, the Rek James Ridge up into Iceland. I was talking about this earthquake today. I do believe it was a 4.5 earthquake, 4.4 in South Janaris, just off the coast of the capital of Iceland. Lots of activity through the North Mid-Atlantic. But Canada, USGS, for some reason doesn't want to collaborate, but here looking at Can Canadian earthquakes, lots of activity here uh, north and west of Ottawa up into the St. Lawrence. 
as well. Lots of notable activity through Alberta. And of course, Juan de Fuca Plate, Hecate, Hecate Strait, BC, just recently there. Here is the Juan de Fuca, that zigzag line off the coast of British Columbia. Notable swarm north of Campbell River. Having a look here, north and south view from California right up into Vancouver and Victoria Island. That was the tremor map. Definitely something building. And it's even showing across Canada. Almost 10,000 earthquakes the past 28 days. And there's been literally hundreds of them through Japan, Philippines, Marianas Trench. A very active region on our planet. I do believe something's going to give here. I think we're at the tipping point. Things are going to get real hectic here real soon. Having a quick look here at the last seven days for earthquakes around the world. It seems kind of in a lull. We are reporting below average earthquakes on USGS. 7.5 earthquake Japan is a very notable earthquake for the past seven days, but I do believe we're on the verge of something maybe even bigger in the Northern Hemisphere or towards Mariana Islands. Heads up, much love everybody. Be ready, stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun, and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.